nice sunlight oh, coming in from the car out there, the windshield. Um, been having a blast here with this CNC mill. And so I'm just gonna, this could be the last video I'm going to do kind of on this subject. If anybody needs help with any of it, just contact me privately in a comment, whatever. Do everything I can to help you out. This thing's a blast. Um, show you here in the beginning just a little bit of its capabilities. Not much. Um, everybody's seen the 60 gear. Comes off the lathe. Uh, screwing around. Got a gear. <laughs> it cuts it right out too. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> so, um, I'll just show a little bit of what it can do and then the key part of what I'm going to show is how to engrave because there's no videos out there that take you all the way through to PATH which is what produces the G-code for it so I hope you enjoy. I cannot tell you <coughs> just how powerful this program is. It's just ridiculous. They've got everything in the world in here. Look at this. Speed it up, man. It's uh, playing around, just trying to learn the next step. But um, boy, I wish there were tutorials on each little piece in this thing. Um, talking videos. Pat, and the plugins are crazy. I just put, um, let's see if I can create another sheet. Yeah, blank sheet, path, gears. So look for FC gear, boom. You can change all the teeth on this thing. Uh, how many teeth? Let's go 30 teeth. Boom. <laughs> you can make gears up the yin yang. This is ridiculous. Every type of gear there is, racks, pinions. You can move stuff around and see that it meshes. I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this thing, test framework, I don't know what ray trace is, but so far I've only done part design and path, started messing around with gears, but no tutorial, well the tutorials go all the way up to the point where, okay, you made it, now how the heck do you uh, machine it? So they don't go into path to tell you the tools and how to create the G-code to actually machine the gear. Crazy control Z should get that out of there. No. Add it on you know, no undo. Oh gear rack, just delete it, hit delete, right? Yeah, gone. <laughs> this is crazy. Does this have depth? It sure does. <laughs> ay ay ay. So, um incredible, incredible program. Okay, I just wanted to show this guy. Where is it? There it is. There is the gear plug-in. And nobody shows, yeah, everybody shows how to um, design the gear, but nobody goes into the actual path and shows you how to do it. I used this one, what was it? Create a contour path uh, for the base object. So I just selected the top, and then I selected that, and just went through the different... Um, steps here in it you know as far as depths um step down five thou start death with zero final death minus fifty thou uh, i'll show the part but i didn't want to go all the way through the plastic into my table um, and then uh, save the g code or whatever and then here it is right here and it looks great it came out you know tools on the top of the work i didn't have to do any reversing or whatever and i'll show the part i didn't unfortunately i was learning here so i didn't tape um how i was making this part and doing stuff um but that is cool it turned out it was a teeny little gear i used a one millimeter drill pro to make it and then i did it in plastic so just wanted to share that engraving in FreeCAD. so you want to figure out how to do it and what's the first thing you do you go to youtube f-r-e-e-c-a-d engraving and up comes 
three videos. Um, so that's kind of what you get. So I didn't know, and you start the first one here, and hello, and welcome. You follow everything that they have to do, but the video doesn't go into path, which is the final workbench that shows you how to actually machine this. So I followed every step of all these three videos and you go in the path and you try to figure out how in the world do you do it. You cannot pocket it. You, I couldn't figure out how to do it to save my life. So I'm not sure why they're showing this. And what finally hit me was in FreeCAD, if I go on the path, I might be able to do it. Well, I just create a new sheet here, create a body. All right. Um, if I go into path and you look at these, is it going to give me? Yeah, there we go. So I tried all the different ones with the um, other text things that they do, but I hit this and it says creates an engraving path around a draft shape string. And that's where you are. You're in the draft workbench making a shape string. So I thought, all right, let me do this then. Um, I want to go to part design and I want to create a sketch in the XY plane and just make a square here right there and right click and hit this and lock it and I basically have a piece of wood I'm going to grave that's 1.4 inches by 6 inches 6 enter all right both mouse buttons to move it scroll wheel to shrink it down I'm done do it again I don't know why it likes to do that I already had it in the screen but whatever so now I want to uh, pad the thing, make it thicker. Select sketch, pad, half inch, 0.5, enter. All right, so now push in the scroll wheel and I can go all around. So I go top view. So there it is. Now I want to go into draft. This is where you start doing your text. Um, so I hit the S and it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it right there. String the mini machine shop. S H O P. I spelled it out. Uh, space bar keeps breaking on me here. All right. So uh, you can't, you have to hit enter to keep going from step to step. This one was kind of a bug. Whatever height you put in there, you're going to get twice. So if I put in 0.1, I'm going to get um, two tenths tall. Interesting, the units don't show here. And this is with one of the bugs. You have to say 0.1 inch. Now suddenly it knows. Otherwise, it keeps defaulting to whatever was in there. That's one of the first bugs or gotchas. Tracking zero. Full path. And then here's what I discovered. If you use um, regular fonts like Arial, it's going to have two lines. I had to download um, fonts which are called stick fonts. And where'd it go? All right, see, wonderful. Oh, because I didn't change the padding here. Uh, reversed, true. There it is. It was on the bottom of the thing. I forgot to mention, whenever you pad, always hit re reverse. So rather than the tool being here, when you're in path, the tool will be on the top now. So there's, that was one of the gotchas there. Uh, I want top view. Okay. So there is my text. And notice this is stick. So you just go on Google and type in um, stick TTF, true type fonts. And you'll find a few of them there. 
So now I've got this going, and all I need to do now, and this is where they end, they don't take you in the path to actually show you how to do the actual engraving. So you go in the path, where are you here? There you go. And I create a new job up here, and I want to work on the shape string. Okay. And here's the next bug, or possible gotcha uh, actually you can see there's the tools on the top of the work um, how do we get back to top view there we are um, one of the gotchas is this text is not in the surface it's on the top of the surface so if you don't say one thou here you know, where you're going to have extra material on the top to machine away. You don't say one thou. You're going to have a problem when you get into actually machining because it's going to have an error in the code. Okay. Job. All right. So I got to pick a tool. I'm just going to pick a spotting drill. Create tool controller. Okay. Spotting drill. You give it the feed rate 10. Uh, 10 and I'm actually going to run this at a thousand this is not RPM it was it's supposed to be some kind of percent make sure the units are all correct before you continue on this is where if I didn't have that thousands the stock would have an explanation point by it you hover over and it's going to say error it took me a while to figure out that the text is on top it's not in the surface now uh, the next one is finally here it is I want to do engraving path around the draft shape string boom uh, okay so now depths you want to scrap all this stuff discard it I'm gonna start at zero on the surface scrap this discard final depth uh, let's see I want to go in point 020 thousands this used to have a problem it would give me all kinds of different things for some reason I think partly because I had in the um, uh, it's not here edit in the setting preferences here I used to have four digits that was causing a serious problem once I got it to continually say thou and put in inches uh, because uh, yeah I had to put in inches to get it to work right point zero two zero inches enter now it's ah see look at how it changed that's the correct wording so that other one where it said point zero two zero would not work it's a bug or something in it step down discard this same thing you want it to read thou here like this and not a fraction because the other one was a fraction of a thou that was 20 tenths of a thou or whatever so yeah it wasn't gonna fly I want to step down uh, say five thousands so there is the crucial piece discarding all this stuff and then having it read correctly for it to actually work heights uh, operation and I forgot where it used to say step over oh, I guess it doesn't do it in this because it's uh, tracing so now when you hit apply you don't really see anything because the materials in the way so if I hit the space bar get rid of the material now you can see it's engraving it in the wrong direction because in the operations I didn't say minus uh, do I can I double click it yeah good heights oop, depths minus 20 thou minus apply boom now it's the other way and it works correctly so that's what you got to do to actually engrave and it like I said if you import Arial or something like that it's going to have two lines around it so you're actually going to be tracing around the letter um, in other words if it's an I 
the end mill is going to go up, over, down, and over. So it's going to, it, it gives a cool effect. So. so that's it. Now all I have to do is I can just hit here, generate the G code, save it as something, test.nc. And again, uh, my post processor is GRBL. Boom. And there's the code to go through. And I'm done. So I can import that test.nc into the universal G-code sender and proceed to machine this out. Works beautifully. Uh, I guess I could try to import. Let me get rid of, uh, okay, I'll get rid of the job. Uh, all right, well, that's quite a bit to show the other uh, text, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. So this is how you engrave in FreeCAD and transfer it over to Universal G-Code Sender. Hopefully I don't jiggle too much here. I got the camera up against the magnifying glass lens. There's the text that it did with the spotting drill. It, to me, it's just gorgeous. And here's the pocket that I showed in that one video. How big is that thing? Yeah, see, one inch. This was interesting, the heights, because originally I said 0.3, and it seems like it's playing like a radius. It started doing 0.3, which was twice as tall. So I said, well, I can't read it here, 1.5. Yeah, and it's like three tall. So I can finally engrave.